Thank you very much. Ah, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and to get a chance to introduce to you our medical spa resort in Austria. That's a part of my speech, and, but the main part will be how we do our business and how we use the ancient wisdom of our founder. So let's start. That's Kurhaus Scherding. It's a former monastery in Upper Austria. We are situated two hours south of Munich, directly on the border to Germany, to Bavaria. We have no monks in this time in our building, so we are a resort with 85 rooms and 115 beds. We are completely a healing hotel. We have no wellness or well-being. What we are doing? This cartoon shows it quite well, I think. We tear down the gray veil from the eyes of our guests so they can restart, so they can see the colorfulness, the brightness of life when they are healthy. We have one mission. We work with our guests for a more of healthy years. That's our mission. And that's very important. There is a very new study from the OECD. And in Austria, in Switzerland, and in Germany, there are very similar results. The life expectation and average is about 84 years. That's nothing new. But the number of healthy years is 57. And that's the challenge for us. So we are right here in the place to give our guests more healthy years because the reason is it is a lack of health prevention. And there's our field. We have four tools to do this. We have medical doctors. We have the traditional European medicine. We use the system of Sebastian Kneip, better known as the water doctor from Bavaria. It's a member of the European medicine, besides Hildegard von Bingen, so maybe we can. Then we have Asian therapists to do traditional Chinese medicine for 40 years. And we have seven Indian therapists from Kerala, from the south of India, to do Ayurvedic treatments. And we have no dogma. We don't say this one is the right way for your health, but we'll listen to our guests and Mostly, it's a combination of all four tools we use to give the guests more healthy years. That is what we are doing. And now I'd like to switch over how we do this. We are owned by the Catholic Church. Our owner are the brothers of St. John's, the brothers of mercy. St. John was a Portuguese man uh, who lived and died at last in Granada in the south of Spain. And there is still his house. And on his house there is written, you can see it here on the bottom, El Corazón Manda. In English, the heart commands. And that is our foundation. That's our basis. From this foundation, we have defined four core values. Quality, respect, responsibility. There's nothing special. But the fourth value is the special one. The fourth value is spirituality. It's one of our core values. And this spirituality is very important for us in our daily business. And that's one of the most beautiful pictures. 
You might know it as the cover from Dark Side of the Moon of Pink Floyd. <laughs> That's one reason why it's beautiful. But the second one, it makes spirituality visible. For me, spirituality is like the white light. You can't see it, but it's everywhere. And the prisma in the middle makes spirituality visible. And this prisma stands for our spiritual leadership, for our charismatic management, which whom we make spirituality for our guests, for our staff, and also in private, visible. For us, spirituality is diversity, colorfulness, you see the rainbow colors on the right side, and spirituality is full of life. It's daily full of life, and that's a huge present. On the very right hand, you see four letters, and these rainbow colors made, for example, stand for the personality profile types. You know the DISC profile types? The DISC model? Who knows the DISC model? Okay, a few. So let's make a short sidestep because the personality is a very, very important factor. The DISC model is one of the world's best known profiling for personalities. There are main four personality types. There the letters stand for. I start with the D. D stands for dominance. Dominant people. Very result oriented, very extroverted. I have made a picture for myself so that I can remember or remarkable the dominant personalities. It's a picture from the world of animals. It's the shark. The shark's most important question is, what can others do for me? That is the shark, dominant. You all might know sharks. There is their opposite. There is the S. S stands for steadiness. Steadiness. There is a bit more relationship oriented and a bit more introverted. And the S for me is the whale. The most important question for a whale is what can I do to make others happy? You all might know whales. The key word or the hard word for a whale is sorry. Sorry. What can I do for you? How can I help you? They are completely different personalities. And all of them are your guests, your clients, your staff, your relatives maybe, your partner. And when you want a shark or a whale that he does what you like him to do for you, you have to talk to him or to her in his or her language. So you have to learn sharkish, you have to learn whalish, and you have to learn two more languages. That means there's the I. And I stands for initiative, influence. And I for me is the dolphin. The most important question for a dolphin is, where is the next party? <laughs> ah, he's an optimist, motivated, a good for a project. That's a dolphin. And the last one, the C stands for compliant. And in the world of animals, the C stands for an owl. No fish, for an owl. Owl, owl, for an owl. Oily, yes, for an owl. 
Yeah? But now, I'll, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Austrian English. <laughs> For an owl. It's no fish. The owl is questioning all the day long. Huh? Good for financial transactions, for example. Huh? And these are the four main personalities. There are mixtures, of course. And these personalities have different colors. And these colors you can find on the rainbow colors. And spirituality and spiritual leadership is based on personality. And that's the bridge for uh, the most important slide I will show you today. It's what we understand about or under spiritual leadership. Yeah? There are four factors which defines spiritual or charismatic leadership. First, people reading, attentiveness. You have to know to who you are talking to. You have to know who you want is your guest. You have to know to whom you communicate. Communication is a very good word, communio, together. So you have first to know who is in front of you. People reading. Second one, pacing and leading. You have to pick up the person where she or he is at the moment. You have to pace and then you can go to a lead. And then you can lead him or her to a next step of health prevention, for example. So we practice a very personality-oriented communication. One to one. Not one to many. One to one. The third factor is personality itself. First, you have to know who you are, self-knowledge. Then you have to accept how you are, self-acceptance. And then you have to develop yourself, step by step. And when you imagine a brand is also a personality, you know what you have to do. You have to develop also a brand, day per day. And spiritual leadership for me is a very, very magnificent and powerful coach on our pilgrim travel from I to myself to become whole. That's what spiritual leadership can do for us in everyday life. And I have one chart more, and I invite you to read the following text together aloud. Please do it for me. I can't hear. That's just one version I've heard. And that's the second version. There are two versions in it. Spirituality is nowhere. Or, and that's my conviction, spirituality is now here and let us getting spirituality alive in our thoughts, in our words, and in our works. Thank you very much.